everybody, and welcome to a special episode. Bonus. Bonus episode of uh, What's the Real name of our podcast? Yeah, well, I, was, I was about to say it's a bonus episode of Independence Day. But, uh, Spoiler. Yeah, happy Independence Day, everybody. No, uh, but uh, it's a bonus episode of Real Shame. I have lasted 24 years, I guess, since uh, Independence 96. Day came out. The movie came out. It's 2020 now, uh, in case you're watching this in the future. It's 2020. <laughs> Uh, but 24 years have gone by. I've never seen, until now that is, I've never seen Independence Day. Now, I have seen parts of it. I've seen Welcome to Earth. I've seen the, you know some of the more famous clips from it, but I've never actually sat down and watched the movie from beginning to end. So we thought, what a perfect opportunity to do a bonus episode then right around Independence Day. Let's do Independence Day. That's right. So tell them. Tell them about Independence Let's Day. Let's do Independence Day. Ah! This way! This way! Get up! Get up! That's what you get! Ha <laughs> ha! Look at you! Ship all banged up! Who's the man? Huh? Who's the man? Wait till I get another plane! I'm lining all your friends up right beside you! Where you at, huh? Huh? Where you at? Welcome to Earth. That's what I call a close encounter. Aliens have entered the Earth's atmosphere and are hovering over major cities across the globe. As nations of the world try to communicate with them, Jeff Goldblum's David Levinson discovers a countdown hidden inside our satellite communications. The aliens start destroying major cities, and now it's up to mankind to fight back and defend themselves. We follow President Whitmore, played by Bill Pullman, Will Smith's Captain Stephen Hiller, and a bunch of various other people as they try to deal with the alien onslaught. After a few failed offenses, our main cast falls back to Area 51 to make their final stand. President Whitmore learns about plausible deniability, and we learn that the U.S. military have known about extraterrestrials and actually have been studying them inside of Area 51. After an enlightening conversation David has with his father, they hatch a plan to take the aliens down. And this is Independence Day. So Independence Day came out in 1996. It's directed by Roland Emmerich and it's also written by Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. They've done a bunch of these kind of disaster movies together, uh, writing and directing. And uh, I think they actually did Stargate together. It was they, their they first. Did. Yep romp together um i remember the build-up for this movie being huge i remember like id4 yes. was on everything yep uh, i remember like uh mtv's i think it was spring break or summer had like a barbecue cookout and they interviewed will smith and there was like a countdown to it i just remember like this Big countdown to Independence Day, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't wait. Yeah. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I don't think I saw I've seen Bad Boys before Independence Day. I think I've seen probably a few Fresh Prince of Bel Air episodes prior to this, but I think this was my first experience of who would become the Will Smith. So, like you said, you did not see it when it came out. Is there any particular reason why or? It just never was in the cards. My family saw it and said that this was the dumbest movie they'd ever seen. <laughs> oh. Um, we have and, a guest star. And on the, yeah, Curry's here for her to, to chime in on this movie. But um, they, they said it was the stupidest movie they've ever seen. And don't watch this movie unless you want to get dumber. <laughs> um, and so I, my parents are smart people. So I was like, they're probably right. Uh, and and might I add, they're also savage critics. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe that's why I don't is, know where the Bermuda Triangle is. Which is, is. where I, I guess I got it from. But uh, yeah, they were like, this movie's stupid. Uh, I definitely, I had friends that saw this movie. Yeah. I think some of them liked it, some of them hated it. But at the time, because uh, I was, you know, in my 20s uh, when I when this came out. But uh, I, I, was, I was already into film. Yeah. And I think I, at that point, I was probably going through a phase of like being the snooty critic. Like, Oh, I've seen Kurosawa, and I've seen Tarkovsky, and yeah. I've seen 
Independence Day, Ugh. you know, like PU or whatever. Yeah. So I just kind of poo pooed the idea of seeing a movie like this. Hey, same thing with Armageddon. That's what, that's what yeah. the reason why I've never oh. seen Armageddon, which yeah. is why it's on my list. Uh, but some of those movies like that, um, I did see, you know, Con Air and some of the other kind of action movies that came out in the 90s. But I missed Independence Day. I missed Armageddon. And there's probably a few others that I can't think of. But that's that's really why. And I've just never really had that big of a desire to see it. So Until I forced you to see it. Until you forced me to see it. But that's what the show is all about. To, to force us to step out of our cinematic comfort zones yeah. and watch stuff that we have never seen. And I do feel like this is like... Will Smith's big great breakthrough for film. Uh, he did do Bad Boys prior, yeah. which I think was well received. But I just remember, you know, he did Independence Day, and that was huge. And then the following year, he followed that up with Wild Wild West. <laughs> Not so great, but it just kind of set the, you know, Will Smith uh, train a running. Mm-hmm. So 26 years later, what did you think of Independence Day? Were your parents right? I love Independence Day, the holiday. This movie, God no. Oh really? I my parents were right. I, I'm sorry. My my parents were right. I I is sat there, down. Is there anything redeemable about this movie? I sat down. Uh, not a whole lot. Um, I okay. I sat again. I sat down to watch this movie. I, I feel like with an open mind. I mean, of course, I remember what my parents said, but I was like, you know what? I have revisited like Con Air and some of these other movies, you know, re- recently, like within the last year or so. And even if I didn't like them then, I feel like I've softened on them due yeah. to just general nostalgia. But man, this movie, it it is stupid. I'm sorry. It is stupid. Oh, it, it like the But it's the that, fun stupid. It wasn't even that fun to me though. Like uh, if they if they would have trimmed it down by like 30 minutes uh it goes on for two and a half hours i didn't watch the extended version but the just the regular version goes on for about two and a half hours they're shaking their heads at me but the the movie goes on for two and a half hours shorten that shit and like (laughs) i i mean it's just i'm sorry i i I was watching it and when it first started so it gets going right away like the the aliens are here and i was like cool like there's not going to be like a whole bunch of boring shit happening even the movie title explodes yeah until until the spaceship show up so i was like cool we're getting this bad boy underway uh but then i as i watched the movie i would go like god did they really say that line or did he really do that or whatever and it was like i i kept trying to tell myself you're being too hard on it. It's like I had a critic on one shoulder, like the the harsh critic on one shoulder and the lenient critic on the other, and they were duking it out the whole movie. But eventually the harsh critic just beat the crap out of the lenient critic. Um, I'm serious. But because I, I kept critic. trying to say, look, Andy, don't be so hard on the movie. But I, it just kept getting sillier and sillier and cornier and cornier to me. I just yeah. didn't care for it much at all. Um, and even... So every time I watch these movies, I always I, I don't I don't want to read any reviews or anything like that beforehand to color the way that I see yeah. the film. But when I'm done watching the movie, I'll go watch the Skull Niebuhr. I'll watch I'll read Rotten Tomato reviews or whatever. Even the people that gave it favor favorable reviews were like, "This is dumb as hell." It but is, but we liked it. Yeah, like, yeah. So I feel like I fell in the camp of this is dumb as hell, and I didn't like it. Yeah. So I, I feel like a very small camp. Yeah. Maybe no, no, maybe micro camp. No, I don't know if it's micro I camp, mean, but. I don't no. think like I, mean, I got a whole host of things we can go. Right. Over, so I don't think it's like this is not elevating cinema, but no, that's not what we're required from this movie. Like this is Agreed. a movie very much of like we saw Day After Tomorrow or not Day After Tomorrow, 2012, mm. which I'm curious. Which if, I didn't like. Did you like it worse than this movie? Uh, it's like a movie like Earthquake. It's yeah, like a movie yeah. Like, I mean, I, probably 2012 is worse than this movie. Yeah. yeah, I feel like this movie is more watchable than 2012. It's a movie yeah. like Geostorm. It's just one of those, you know, uh, disaster spectaculars, right? Um, I was worried you weren't gonna like this movie because of Will Smith's shtick, but I, I think I don't hate Will Smith. <laughs> but I think I, Will Smith was fine. But I, I, I mean, I buy into it. I like. I think it's. I. I mean. Like I said, I, this movie's not groundbreaking. It's not changing cinema, but maybe it is nostalgia. It's just a lot of fun for me. Yeah, it's just, I, and I get that. But I, I think you, know, you guys grew up with it and grew up yeah. watching it, so you probably have, you know, I think just for that reason yeah. alone, because I, I know there's movies that I like that I saw when I was younger that I've seen over the years that I will defend to the death that other people see now for the first time, like you might see for the first time yeah. now, and be like, "What movie are you watching, Andy? This sucks." I just, I don't. I don't know if that necessarily falls into that camp, but I understand what you're saying. I don't because I don't think it's a bad movie. Like, I don't. I just. I do. 
I don't think it's one of those like so bad it's good kind of movies. No. You know, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not good. It's what's the, what's the movie we watched with um uh the the with the Magnificent Seven, um, uh, uh, Great Escape. No, no, the no. Uh, the outer space one. Oh, oh, Battle Beyond the Stars. It's not like a yeah. Battle Beyond the Stars. Like Battle Beyond no, the Stars. That's just a terrible. It's movie. a terrible movie, yeah. but there's this some people that, that have nostalgia that make that movie rose color, right? Right. But I don't think this movie is like by definition terrible. Well, but yeah. maybe that's that, that's that's what that's where I that's why yeah. I push back on that. Yeah. I got All right. You. Let's um, I'm at, you know. Yeah, let's just let's go down what you what you thought about it because I'm well, curious. Your grievances. There, yeah, there, I yeah. just okay, we'll, we'll so, put up we'll put up the poll. So again, again, <laughs> there, there's it's not like Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin are Shakespeare. I mean, yeah. it's not like they're writing like amazing thing. I am fully on board with popcorn kind of movies that, that are just kind of fun, but this movie was just so even even popcorn movies that are silly, I can kind of get behind more, but this movie takes it to like in my opinion like the nth degree as far as the silliness and everything goes and again i i can understand some people enjoy it i understand you guys like it but i just i felt like it was it was campy without trying to be mm -hmm. and if they would have just maybe embraced that a little bit more embrace the camp i maybe it would have been more enjoyable for me but I, I found it unintentionally corny and unintentionally campy like i feel like roland emmerich was like yeah this is going to be awesome and again, it's awesome to you guys. Just wasn't awesome to me. Also, he's got a million characters in this movie. Yeah. I mean, like, why do you need all of these people? Why do we need to see? So Randy Quaid uh, plays himself, I think, right? Because that's I think that's how Randy Quaid is in real life. Why do we care about Randy Kid Quaid? Why does Why does it ever follow Randy Quaid's kids? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it spends time with them. They do nothing in the movie. Yeah. I, I don't get that. And and the whole Randy Quaid is like a drunk alcoholic pilot, pilot. Who, pl who flies a biplane and crop dust things, but they're going to let this guy, they're going to trust him with like a fighter jet. I understand they're, rec they're recruiting anybody that can fly. Yeah, anybody at Aero 51. But they're going to, yeah, but they're going to get, they're going to get this guy to, and I understand that in an, in an alternate cut, uh, they rejected him. Oh, really? And, but he ends up flying his biplane up there uh, with a torpedo and still does what he does in the movie. To me, that would have at least been more believable because I, if I was in the military, I'd have been like, you're not going to fly. Like, you're an yeah. alcohol alcoholic. You know, and, and then he's like, I picked well, the wrong day the to stop. Did they you, let the, I don't, that was another thing. No, you why, didn't watch why did they let the Why did they let the president fly? Yeah. Like, what the hell? And why was the president's wife in this movie? She did nothing except die. Yeah. <laughs> she does nothing in the movie. Like, she they're like, oh, she, oh, we can't, we've lost contact with her. And so you're like, oh, she's dead. And then she reappears only to die. Because you have to bring Vivica A. Fox into the whole mix. I guess, but it, I, I feel like Mary McDonald did nothing in this movie, so she could have been cut. Randy Quaid's kids should have been cut. I think she. Listen, hold on, listen. I think she dies between the movie and the sequel. Oh, the uh, like the... resurgence. Who Vivica Fox does? No, no, um, Mary McDonald. She dies in this movie. Oh, he's, she does die no, in this movie. So, so I'm talking about the first lady. Talking about yeah. like the chief of staff chick. I don't yeah, know yeah, no, I'm, ta I'm talking about the first lady. Oh, and that's another thing. Oh. Just like Outbreak, or just like 2012, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John, is John Cusack going to get back with Amanda Pete? Uh-oh, is Jeff Goldblum going to get back with uh, well, I, still I, I don't know, Margaret Collin or whatever still it is? There. I guess so, but oh my God. This was the beginning of the bloom -assance. If anything, I thought uh, Will Smith was probably the best thing about this movie. Hey, yeah. well, I, I, this is, hey. Let's, I count this as a win. Hold on, let, let, hold let's on. Okay, who, what's the Listen. best thing about this movie? Okay. Okay, one, we have to acknowledge the hilarity of when the uh, when drunk Randy Quaid comes into the diner and the guy goes, hey, Russ, did something happen to you? Yeah. And then they ask him about what type of experiments. <laughs> did the aliens sexually, they yeah. They sexually and then he tells the reporter yeah, that later he's like, they the did sexual experiments on him or so, whatever. I mean, I think... In 1996, when Randy Quaid, 1994, yeah, 1990, no, 96, no, 96. 1996, when Randy Quaid flew his plane into the spaceship's butthole, I <laughs> thought it was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> like he goes, "Hello, boys, remember I'm, I'm back. back." So I'm writing these notes down. Did you think Bill down. Pullman's? Yeah, let's let's. I, did, Bill Pullman is fine as president. Did you think his speech I, was rousing at no, all? No, I thought really? it was so corny. Oh man, so I corny. thought I thought his speech was like no, like one of the better like 
And he's like motivating we're gonna, coach. We're going to make this all, like he's telling all the countries of the world. I guess we're this is all going to be our Independence, Independence Day or whatever. Yeah. The other countries of the world did nothing really in this movie, did they? I mean, it shows like some Iraqi people, so it shows some British people. Well, well, but what do they really? Do? They were. I'm not, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying those countries do nothing in real life. No, no, I'm saying no, in this movie no, they have nothing his, to do. His speech was not to the other countries. The they were Morse coding how to get like like how they to defeat them. Like his speech was just to the people around him. Uh, no, his speech was to everyone. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. The speech was after the whole like it was like, hey guys, we've got a plan. It wasn't like they're not more yeah. supporting to like Australia. No. Today is our Independence Day. I, uh, according to what I read afterwards, because some critics took offense to his jingoistic speech mm. because it was addressed also to other nations, and they're like, how dare he talk about? Oh, now you're now our Independence Day can no. be shared by you. I'm st I'm just I saying thought. what. I read so it was my it right. was my understanding that it was to everybody. They're planting the virus. They're like, hey guys, we're planting the virus. We got this much time, so at this time we're coordinating everything. Go. It was not like there's I I do think the speech was to everyone. There is Morse code, so everyone can can jointly attack. The thing is, is there's twenty plus spaceships that are in the Earth atmosphere, and each of those ships need to be taken down mm -hmm. because they're going to drop the shield. So the other countries did participate because they helped take out all those other ships that we didn't see. I guess because there's three over the U.S. I think I, because it concentrates so much on Randy Quaid, yeah. the president, and like one other guy who gets blown up like pretty quick. And so I guess I just didn't really see those other countries yeah. like doing that stuff. I don't. I don't know. I and just then, liked the one guy goes about time. What are they bloody gonna do? And it's like, oh, it's, has it really been that long? Like, right. It seems like it's happened. It's happened. Really we got fast. Brent Spiner in this movie. I mean, so Brent, what else? let's Brent go. Let's go down the list. Yeah. Well, as I as I, as I'm watching yeah. the movie, I'm very quickly kind of typing notes or whatever. And at one <laughs> point, I just wrote, "Oh boy, this just gets sillier and sillier." Yeah. That was the the note that I had. Was that the part where the lady went up to the tower and opened up the? Sign the, the the stripper girl. No, but the, okay, Fox, this, this note came up. right. At, I wrote down: Is mommy sleeping yet? <laughs> no, she's dead. Is what he should have said. He doesn't say that. But I was laughing at that part of the movie because I didn't care about Mary McDonald at all because she. No. I didn't feel like need to be in the movie. And the little girl is like, "Is mommy sleeping now?" And he's like, "Yes, yeah, she's sleeping." But I, in my head, I was thinking he was like, "No, you idiot, she's dead." She's dead. And then I wrote, "Oh boy, this just gets sillier and sillier." For me, the movie starts, I was like, cool, we're, we're getting underway. By the time it got to the tunnel scene with Vivica Fox, I was cracking up. Like, I thought that looked the, so bad. Uh, it looks bad now, but it was cool back then. Oh, Maybe, man, but I thought so it looked cool. awful. But they did some, uh, there's some stuff they, they, they the way they yeah. film the explosions is better than all the CGI explosions they do now. Because they actually yeah. shot it for real. Like, for, they built the city vertically like this. And then they shot explosions and flames up this way, and they had the camera up filming it. So, like, like you, a lot of people point out, like, the exposure on the flames are correct and the explosions look correct, whereas, you know, with CGI stuff, they kind of cheat that and it doesn't look that good. Yeah. But, yeah, with the dog jumping and all that kind of stuff, nowadays it looked Ooh. terrible, but back then it was like, whoa, this is... This is I, I thought it looked bad. I didn't think all the effects in the movie looked bad, but I again, when I was done watching the movie, some of the critics argued that the yeah. effects were crap, even I though this it. this won an Oscar for visual effects. It, I disagree with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that most of it looked pretty good. Some of it, again, I thought was kind of laughable yeah. or whatever, but yeah. I didn't have... Yeah, it was only really bad when you had, like, you know, because the, the cars flipping and the people flying, that was real, but then in the background... Which I was cracking up at the people clearly, flying. Clearly, Sorry. the flames <laughs> were... That was really... Uh, the. I mean, but like the whole, like the building, like the White House explode. I mean, that's like, it was such an elaborate. It was a balsa wood. Yeah. Awesome. It was yeah. a mac mac -a I remember Entertainment Weekly had like this whole special on it. And I was like, I'm going to see this movie and I'm fucking pumped. And I'm 12 years old. Yeah. And I'm really happy about it. Yeah. I, I, so I do think Will Smith, I mean, I like Bill Pullman a lot in this movie. I, he's fine. I think he's wasted in the sequel, which I don't think you've seen yet. But he is. Uh, I think Will Smith, like, his shtick is awesome in this movie. I like the bravado he has. It's interesting that he's not brought into the movie until, like, 20 or 30 minutes into the movie. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, one of the main characters. Like, a lot of stuff happens beforehand, especially with um, Jeff Goldblum's character and his dad and, um, you know, Bill Pullman and stuff like that. But then when you finally see him waking up, you know, we're pretty, you know, almost all the way through kind of the, you know, the big the introduction of everyone in the movie and stuff. But I like his bravado. I like it when he punches 
alien in the face and goes, welcome to Earth. I mean, did you like that? No? Yes? I, I mean, because I, I've seen that clip plenty, so I, I, I didn't have as big of a reaction. Or when he's like, what's that smell? It's, and he starts kicking it. Like, yeah. I, just, I, I did have a problem with the punch even when I was younger because yeah. of the fact of he punches them and knocks the alien out, but mm. yet when they're in like the operating room, it takes like four steps to break it apart. So, yeah. I, I, I mean, either Will Smith packs a really big punch or... Um, Pretty jacked in the movie. I mean, yeah. yeah. Or so, so I'm, that, that and was kind of like... What would you think of, um, of Jeff Goldblum's character? He's fine. He's he's kind of similar to the the Jurassic Park character. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and God, he is a genius. He can he do is. everything. In this movie, which I found a little far cable repairman. I also so again, this movie it's so broad. Everything there's no subtlety. That okay, yeah, that's what you get with an explosions kind of movie, a popcorn <laughs> movie. It's like a Michael Bay movie. I mean, I, I would tend to lump Roland Emmerich and Michael Bay kind of in the same category yeah. of filmmaker, right? I mean, they just they make ex- explosive yeah. explosive movies or movies with explosions that people want to see and people you know eat up or whatever. But the writing and everything is so just so broad everybody is there's no nuance whatsoever and again i get it they're not writing shakespeare but still it was just so so much i felt like the script could have easily these characters didn't even need names you could just have like crazy looking scientist awesome engineer you know awesome (laughs) fighter pilot president drunken pilot whatever like they don't need because they're they're not really characters so much as they are cartoons really in this movie i didn't get like they had like a uh jeff goldblum and the president had like a backstory where he punched him before he was the president or whatever but nothing really comes of that i mean when he initially goes no not when he initially goes into the white house bill pullman is like oh this guy or whatever but then that's pretty much it they don't the, really world, have any, it, the world's getting destroyed. You kind of put that stuff behind. I'm just saying, like, why even why even have that? I thought that was going to play a bigger part into the story. It's it's it does okay. This is what this is. It plays a big part in it because he had like so Jeff Goldblum has figured out the code. He's like a genius or whatever, and he's like calls her and she's like, oh uh, no, we won't answer. But like he's it, it's the fact of like. There's this backstory, and that's why he's like, "Oh my God, like David, like you punched me, and you punched me, like I don't want to listen to you." And then he's in like, that one scene, though, that's it. Well, and I do, I do feel like, I do feel like at Area 51, too, um, President Whitmore, Bill Pullman doesn't have a lot of patience for when Jeff Goldblum's trying to show him how he can take down this the shield by giving it a virus. Yeah, like I feel like he he's exacerbated with him and stuff like that at that too. So, but I. I understand what you're saying, but I do feel like, like you said that you feel like these are cartoon characters and these are broadly drawn characters, but I feel like having that conflict does kind of make them a character, right? Like they could have, the movie could have been the same without that. Only if they do more with it, either, either do more with it or don't have it at all. I I mean, to me, I mean, I think, I think it was enough. Like I, I I put it in the sky captain in the world tomorrow of enough kind of stuff. The, the, the like where it's the bare minimum to kind of get the point across. But the issue, the, the only issue I had is like they, I mean not only, but like, so they've been divorced for three years and like how she, uh, she like dismisses his call. And part of me was like, you know, after three years, like, I mean, if this is happening, like she probably would have answered the phone, you know, like to me, if they were like in the midst of the divorce, she'd be like, oh gosh, not him again. But it was just like, to me, it seems like yeah. she was so, so like anti picking up the phone. I'm like, this guy hasn't been calling you like every day for three years. Maybe like, he has. I, I, I yeah. So, no, he still wears I agree with you. When he calls her the second time, when he's actually outside the White House, he actually gets her cell phone number or something right yeah. but the first time he calls her somebody comes and brings a phone to her like he just called the white house and was like i need to talk to <laughs> betsy or whatever and they're like oh hang on can you just call the white house and be like hey i want to talk to, i want to talk to donald or whatever like <laughs> and, they're, and they're like uh one second and i don't, I don't like, think so I think she <laughs> like, probably has a phone that an assistant carries maybe she's like no this is her her ex-husband and then they're like oh i, I guess said, she said because she says he says he says he's your husband, and she's like, "Oh, that's bad." I think okay. Kirby's seen this movie probably more than both yes. of us. And also, probably. if anyone hates on Julian Levin's Levin David's father, who's that? 
Oh, I'm not going to hate on Judd Hirsch. I, I love I'm him. not hating on Judd Hirsch. I love Judd Hirsch. Because I, I will come on screen. And uh, I will hate on Harry Connick Jr. So I, when I watched <laughs> this, I was like, I, oh, there was a time when Harry Connick Jr. actually acted in a lot of movies. But I was glad he gets he gets offed uh, pretty quick. And then I, Harvey Firestein, I was like, what is he doing in this movie? <laughs> David, 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 I gotta hide under the desk. I gotta call my lawyer. I gotta call. I gotta call my therapist. <laughs> I no, but three hundred dollars an hour. You passed through his house and Oh shit! It's aliens. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, but I I forgot about Harvey Forrest. I didn't. I, he well, was either here or there. Um, what what else? I I I I'm jumping all around here, but yeah. I, I, I so towards like the, the end towards the end uh, I was so when Jeff Jeff Goldman was like we're gonna give the, the computer a virus I was like cold. what oh, I thought it was so awesome but I was like, cold like, yeah I was like okay so he's like I gave it a cold what I gave okay, it a computer so virus so here's here's my biggest problem with the aliens themselves they come down to Earth they are um like badass they blow up the White House. They blow up the Empire State Building. They blow up all these landmarks. They've got a force field around them. Their little ships are awesome and have force fields around them too, right? Why don't they just annihilate the the world like right then? Why wait? They sit around and do nothing and mm. give the United States time to go do anything and they don't really ever explain why that occurred. He said in the, when he had the vision, he goes, they come and they destroy every natural resource. They're like locusts. Right, but why can't they come to Earth and just do that right away? Why do they sit there for a while? I'm sure. Why it do takes they wait two days? Because they get there on July the second. Primary weapon to warm up, but yeah, I, I, I guess. But it. but those little ships went out and they just demolished the like Air Force Base or whatever it was, and NORAD. Mm -hmm. They just go out and just pick that apart like it's nothing. I feel like they could just do that all over the world, but they sit there for a long time. I was like, I don't get that. And that whole like I made I was one with the alien like mentally, That's and he weird. he explains their motivation. Very quickly, and that's it. Like I, like Roland Emmerich, and then when they were writing the script, they were like, "We need a motivation." We'll explain it in like five seconds, and we're done. But I was like, "That's not enough for me." But by the time they got up to the ship, I was like making fun of the movie in my mind, and so I wanted, I wanted a, a nerdy IT alien guy to come out and be <laughs> like, to "Fix the computer." No, be like, uh, the ship and makes the "I, thing I'm going to set up the firewall. You are not going to." Give us a virus. We, we yeah. have we have a DMZ here. You can't get through past the firewall. He or asked, whatever. He asked him to turn it off and turn it back on again. <laughs> yeah. Did you Can try you reboot it? Your modem? Yeah. Yeah. Reboot it, please. I don't know. But. Yeah. One of my biggest problems was like back in the day was like how do you get his Mac to talk to their alien computer? Like how could he write? No, it's how could true. he write? True, how could he code a virus? True. Like that would work on their systems without knowing their system. Like what what security <laughs> flaw did they find? Was there like a stack overflow going on? You know, was there some memory buffer thing going? Like what was what was because well, the satellites? Like maybe the like because yeah. of the satellites, he could hack into right. them. I don't know. But well, I, if you pause the screen when he launches the code or whatever, he's got open bracket, open bracket, open bracket, and he's got some code. He has no closed brackets. Uh, uh, that baby would not compile. I'm I don't, sorry. I don't know what that would not maybe, compile. Maybe it was JavaScript, so it could <laughs> it's, it's just ran in line and just worked. Like, you it's know, okay. JavaScript is basically black magic coding because you can have the worst syntax and it still runs for some yeah. reason. You guys are going to have subtitles and just be like, what all that means? Uh, like other but I, I do remember that standing out and that being kind of weird. But like I said, at the at the end of the day, it was just for me. It's like earthquake and the fact like there's not a lot of character development in earthquake. You know, there's it's just it's just of that ilk. So like that's what I that's what I expect going into it is just fun nonsense, just watching things explode and you know cheering for the good guys at the end. So. I think I think the biggest thing for us for me between this and earthquake is to me earthquake is super campy and kind of knows it and kind of kind of. But I feel like I feel like Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin were really trying to play this straight, yeah. and unfortunately for me, it just did not work at all. With all the stuff going on in the movie, I just I thought it was just so silly, I, and I just again I got to the point where I'm just kind of making it. So I watched this streaming uh, <laughs> last night, and my internet connection cut out. Uh, my and internet went slide. down with like 30 minutes still left to go in the movie because I think the universe was trying to tell me <laughs> stop, stop now. Uh, but I dug out, I have it on Blu-ray, I dug out a disc and I stuck it in and watched it because my internet connection didn't come back on until today. Um, so I, I, I stuck it in and, and watched the last 30 minutes, but I just did not enjoy it. And I tried, I tried to give it 
as fair a chance as I could. Again, I did not sit down going, I'm going to hate this movie. I sat down hoping to be pleasantly surprised at a really, really fun movie, but it just didn't work for me. And maybe I, like like Face Off, because I didn't like Face Off when I first saw it, and when I rewatched it recently, I softened on it some. Maybe I'll watch this again years down the road, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, you know what? What was I thinking? Why was I so harsh on this? But unfortunately, today, or so last night, today, I... Too harsh. I will say that if I had to take you liking Pirates of the Caribbean or Rocketeer more than, or you liking Independence Day, I'm glad you like those other movies oh, yeah. better. So I am, I'm, I'm okay with better. that. Um, with that, I will say, and I know you haven't seen the sequel. The sequel is, is I fell asleep while rewatching the sequel because I wanted to watch the sequel with this, and I don't know if I stayed awake when I watched it in theaters, but I did watch it in theaters. The sequel, I believe, is the worst movie I have ever seen. I would agree with that. Whoa. I think it, it's... It, it is it, it is, is one of the, the worst film. I mean, worst... I, it, I don't know what... like They either changed writers three times during it, they yeah. either changed directors four times during it. It is like, it's, there's, everything's going to shit, and then in ten minutes it's like... There's no there's no cohesiveness yeah, to the whole movie. Isn't it also uh, Roland Emmerich? Yes. And probably written by him as well? Uh, yeah, so. I don't, yes. I don't know if Dean Devlin helped out with the writing of that. Because yeah. they kind of Yeah, I think, split, I think they've split. Because he directed yeah. Geo, Geostorm. Right. Um, but it, it, there's just no cohesion. There's a bunch of... It just feels like they threw everything in the kitchen sink. It feels like the last third of um, 2012, honestly. Mm. Where it's just like cacophonous, a bunch of random stuff, and you're just like, oh, I'm trying to piece together in my mind. I mean, so Jeff Goldblum, like, just a little, 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 little tidbit from the second one. Jeff Goldblum's dad is, like, driving a bus, and there, he's like, someone goes, who's that tall, lanky guy? They're in the desert, and this is, like, four football fields away. Yeah, this is, like, someone half a mile away. Like, see them. And he goes, that's my son. That's it's my like, son. There is no way <laughs> that old guy in the middle of the desert knew that was the, I mean, we, yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah, no, it's sequel terrible. It's not great. Nice. Um, yeah. Did you look up any reviews on this movie? Other than the uh, ones you talked about? I did. So it's the highest grossing film in 1996. It beat Twister, which also came out the same year. And how do you guys feel about Twister? I Kirby love Twister. Kirby loves Twister. I think Twister's good. I hate it's it. Fun. Stu oh. Makowitz uh, did some really awesome stuff with the uh, house one. But I would be, willing to, I would be really willing to rewatch it. I did see it back in 96 and couldn't stand it. But again, that was more snooty movie critic phase, so maybe I would like it better Maybe now. you're I'd a snooty movie critic about all movies from 96. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> what happened in 96? I can't remember what else came out. Uh, Mission Impossible 1 came out in 96. I like that. Uh, I like Mission Impossible 1. Uh, Brian De Palma. It's uh, not a... Brian... I, I will say... Uh, we were talking about Brian De Palma. I, I would say... I don't think Brian De Palma's made a good movie. Well, so... <laughs> he, I've seen... I've seen Stargate. I've seen Godzilla. Stargate's good. I've seen now Independence Day. I've seen 2012. But I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen Stargate. It's been a long time since I've seen Godzilla. Now that we've watched 2012 and I didn't like it and watched Independence Day and I didn't like it, I want to revisit Stargate. I want to revisit Godzilla and I want to watch maybe some of the other ones that they've done. Wait, even Godzilla? Midway. The, the Broderick. <gasps> I love 98 that Godzilla. I but love but that now, movie. well, now I'm interested to see if it still holds up for me because I seem to remember liking Godzilla and I did like Stargate. But Star now, now awesome. I'm curious if, if these are just two of the movies that I don't like of Roland Emmerich's and I like the other stuff or what. But he peaked early curious. with Stargate. I'm curious to see. And um, then a little bit of that carried over to Independence Day, but Stargate's an awesome movie. But it, it won Best Visual Effects. That's the only Oscar it won. Uh, it was 65% fresh, 75% audience score, yeah. two thumbs down. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, they thought it was really stupid. And Leonard Malton gave it two and a half stars, and his review starts... It's spectacular and spectacularly stupid. <laughs> so, uh, it is, uh, most awkward part probably is when uh, Vivica Fox helps the first lady, and she's like, "I'm a dancer in the, the oh, <laughs> ballet." <laughs> goes, I mean, it's just I was like, Aaron, that's yeah. awkward." Like, she goes, "She's like, oh, ballet." She's like, "Nope." I'm yeah. Just, very awkward moment. Okay. Yeah, well, and again, uh, the whole the first lady could have been cut entirely out of the movie in my opinion. Vivica Vivica Fox being at the strip club could have been cut. I mean, that sir I guess the only purpose that served really was she tells her friend, "Don't go like yeah. what, don't take your little billboard or whatever, or your poster board over to the... And she does. And, of course, she gets annihilated. Yeah. 
Uh, but I mean, you don't. We don't need that. That you no. cut the, cut the movie down by thirty minutes. I feel like it's more enjoyable for me anyway. Even if I do think it's silly. So we'll see an Andy cut of Independence Day at some point. Yeah. So that was our well, <laughs> okay. Last okay. thing. Yeah. I liked the some like it hot reference. When nobody's perfect, and he says, I'm not Jewish. Nobody's perfect. perfect. I, I love that. Uh, I, I did catch what, that. I did Adam catch don't that. know what that means. No, I don't know what that means. But he will, because I think Some Like It Hot yeah. is on his uh, list. Like it that. is. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so that was our review on Independence Day for Independence Day. If you saw the movie in 96, you'll probably like it. If you've waited know, 20, I'm, if you waited 24 years, you probably won't like I'm it. But in the mud. Send us, send us, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of Independence Day. If you're watching on YouTube, leave it below. If you're listening to the audio podcast, you know, shoot us an email. Let us know. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, email realshame at gmail.com. Follow us on social media at realshame. And we'll catch you next time with another movie review from our movie list of shame. All right, I'm seeing if anyone else wants to add anything. Nope. Okay, Andy's wrong about Independence Day. I probably am. Eh. Sorry. I'll take them liking other movies over this. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>